So you may see, uh, got it in the middle of the screen. Um, but yeah, so that way you could view the session later if you want to. Um, make sure that your TVs and cell phones are silent to the best of your ability so that way uh, we're all able to hear um, the information and any questions and any answers that we all get. So let's just make sure we keep that in mind, okay? But other than that, let's go ahead and get started, y'all. Um, today we'll be talking about apps for news. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read our disclaimer before we get started. The Wild Tech DC Senior iPad program, its owners and presenters offer technical assistance, virtual health, well-being, information designed for educational purposes only. You should not rely on the information in any apps or topics made by Wild Tech, including but not limited to mobile device applications and any social media pages maintained by the Wild Tech DC Senior iPad program, its owners or presenters as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, treatment, or legal advice. Thank you so much for letting me read the disclaimer. Um, again, please make sure let's uh, silence our TVs and our cell phones, please. Again, the, our, the, our iPads are really sensitive. So if you have any background um, sounds um, and, you know, in, near you, we're gonna be able to hear it. So make sure you guys keep that in mind. Um, if you can't hear me or see me or see the screen, please send a chat um and i really appreciate that um you know again just to have some type of etiquette and you know for us to all be able to um ask questions if we want we need to make sure we all know how to raise our hand in zoom and being this is the advanced session you know the creme de la creme as i always say i want to see a lot of hands up so again if you're here and if you can uh hear me and see me and see the session please raise your hand in zoom and that's how i know you're here and ready to learn, listening. You got your pen and paper ready next to you, or whatever you take uh, use to take down notes. I want to see a lot of hands up, and so I know that you're here, that you're present, that you're ready to learn, that you know how to ask a question if you need to. Because yes, this is our time to interact and have fun. So I want to make sure all of you are able to get the assistance that you deserve. Right. <laughs> So thank you for the 10 of you that have raised your hands. We have uh, 28 folks on right now. I want to see a lot of hands up. Tap on more and then raise hand. Wow, thank you. That was <laughs> six of you did at the same time. Let's see if we can get to close as 100% as possible. Again, I want you to raise your hand in Zoom. You tap on more and then raise hand. Let's see if we can get to 20. <laughs> so who who uh, who three are going to step up <laughs> and raise their hand in Zoom? Come on, you all, you hit more and then raise hand. That's how you raise your hand if you have a question. Okay, you need two more hands up. Can I get two more hands? Just two. <laughs> well, we're doing a great job so far. Yep, just, you know, make sure again, if you guys have a question in Zoom, you tap more and then raise hand. It's so simple. I can see if you have your hand raised or not, and I can know the order based on um, my screen. So please raise your hand if you ever have a question, and we'd love to uh, assist you as best we can. But thank you for all for raising your hands. Um, I love all of you to lower your hand by hitting lower at the bottom. So simple. That's how you lower your hand. You hit lower at the bottom. That blue button. <laughs> yep. So at the bottom, if your hand is raised, it will say your hand is raised and then lower. So when you hit lower, that's how you lower your hand. If you tap on more in Zoom, instead of saying raise hand, it will say lower hand. So if it says that, that means your hand is raised. Okay. So we still got two folks with their hands raised. So make sure you guys lower your hands, okay? <laughs> um, if you want to communicate non-verbally, um, you know, I, um, through the chat, um, it's such an easy way to share a greeting, ask a question, encourage others, congratulate, all that stuff. So you do the same procedure. You tap on more, but instead you tap on chat. When you tap chat, you'll see this um, chat window pop up. At the bottom, it will say tap here to chat. You type in your message and then you send it with that blue button. That's how you send chat. I want everyone to send a hello or 
a good morning or I hope you had a great weekend or a prayer or resources or information, any of those, please. I, I love you all to put that in the chat, just like uh, Brenda did <laughs> and uh, Mr. Gary did uh, uh, almost a 10. So thanks for just saying hello. That's how I know that you're here. So I want everyone to send a chat in Zoom. Tap on more, then you tap on chat, tap here to chat, and then you send it using the blue button. <laughs> Again, just as simple as a hello or a good morning. Make sure you send it to, to everyone, okay? I see someone sent me a direct message. <laughs> so make sure it says send to everyone if it doesn't say send to everyone, it'll say to send to someone else, right? So make sure it says everyone if you want to send a message to everyone. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Lots of good mornings. Yes. It may be it may be a little chilly, but it's uh, pretty sunny. <laughs> so it, I I would try like two three o'clock. I love coming out at that time. <laughs> Feels really good. And we'll be in the late 70s for the majority of this week. So please enjoy the weather. <laughs> yeah. Greetings, everyone. <laughs> yeah, love to see all your smiling faces, as Gracie said. <laughs> so um, please utilize the chat during the session. If you have a question about something we went over, please put it in the chat. I um, may be able to answer it right then and there and, you know, have a flow, right? <laughs> And, uh, you know, of course, during our advanced sessions, you know, throughout, I ask if anyone wants to respond or comment. So um, just keep on listening. For those that have only joined us uh, for the first time today, I hope you enjoy. But if you guys joined in April, I hope you learned something new today. <laughs> uh, today, we'll be going over um, the history of the news, um, you know, learning from the newspaper all the way to now online articles. Uh, I will be introducing two apps today, uh, Apple News and Google News, uh, which I use most frequently myself in uh, my personal time. Of course, we'll have our navigation and our information, just doing a tutorial and showing you guys what the app looks like and what you can take advantage of. And last but not least, our good old overview and discussion, just talking about the apps, help me download these apps and navigate them and have you know everyone see that process. So, you know, for those that, um, you know, don't get um, assistance today, you'll be able to know it in the future or later that day to test out. So it's a lot of fun. And uh, make sure again, if you have your pen and paper ready, love for you guys to take some notes. Down. <laughs> um, first, we're going to again talk about just the history of the news. I love to give some context on what we're learning about, no matter how um, elementary it may be, but there's always something uh, more to learn right? <laughs> Even if it may be something as simple as the newspaper. So this video is from uh, PBS, and it talks about when did the news start. Um, it says, we all have news cycle fatigue. If it's not struggling to find reliable sources online and figure out how to sift through the myriad of competing and sometimes conflicting headlines that roll across our TV screens, cell phones, and social media accounts. But when did the news become integral to our lives? <laughs> and that's that's a good question, right? When did the news start? <laughs> so we'll see this video and you may learn something new. My people in the Buffalo have a shared history together. Sorry about the ads, the Buffalo guys. Was sacred <laughs> they could not imagine existence without the but Buffalo. I do love PBS. That they are put on this earth to help us survive. To think that our greed and our industrialization would blink this thing out. I like this nature. Buffalo's last <laughs> chance. They've survived. We've survived. We both persisted. Yeah, and some of the different programming, especially if you have uh, antenna channels. <laughs> Those are my favorite to watch when I'm with my friends. Mother, I don't have a TV. <laughs> soldier. What if both are at war? Washington National Opera presents the world premiere of Janine Tesori's yes, Grounded, October 28th start? through November 13th at the Kennedy Center. Tickets at kennedy-center.org. Let's face it, we all have new cycle fatigue. If it's not struggling... Yeah. So I hope you all enjoy. 
to find reliable sources online, then it's figuring out how to sift through the myriad of competing and sometimes conflicting headlines that roll across our TV screens, cell phones, and social media accounts. But when did the news in all of these varied and sundry forms become integral to our lives? And why do we even follow it? Survival? Desire to help and empathize? Staying informed? Entertainment? Our answers will vary from story to story, but one thing is certain. We live in a culture in which the news has become almost impossible to ignore. So today, I'm giving you guys the inside scoop on the history of the news. We'll talk about when and how letting the public know what has been happening domestically and globally became an international phenomenon. In his book, Mitchell Stevens defines news as new information about a subject of some public interest that's shared with some portion of the public. Stevens also provides a useful chronology of how the news came to be. Since humans have existed, they've wanted to share their news. We might imagine cavemen grunting and signaling furiously to warn of an imminent attack. Smoke signals, or stories of Greek messengers running to tell about military victories, speakers ascending to the platform at the Roman Forum to present political edicts, and West African griots who shared news and oral traditions within their own communities. Eventually, Ooh, oral right. reports evolved into written ones. Julius Caesar ordered the daily records of Senate proceedings, or ACTA, <laughs> to be posted in public. Some upper-class Romans even got their own handwritten copies to read at home. However, it was the Chinese Han Dynasty and not the Romans who, according to legend, invented paper in 105 CE. By the time of the Tang Dynasty, which began in 618 CE, T. Pao or official newsletters were distributed widely among the elites. With the invention of block printing, it became possible to quickly create multiple copies of these T. Pao's. At the start of the 11th century, a Chinese artisan named Pi Sheng even developed a way to use movable type to make prints. However, this invention wasn't terribly practical for a language that relied on so many discrete characters. That being mm. said, the idea didn't go away. In the 13th century, the Koreans made the first movable type blocks out of metal. Around 1439, cool. the German goldsmith <laughs> Johann Gutenberg developed his own version of a movable type based press system. By 1450, his letterpress made it possible to mass produce books, pamphlets, and other materials. Gutenberg's invention ushered in a new era of mass communication and helped expand literacy throughout the continent. Common people mm, no longer get, depended on a to town read, crier right? <laughs> or a single page posted in town to learn what was going on locally. They also were able to find out about events in other parts of the world. Access to news had skyrocketed, but of course, the circulation of new ideas often threatens those in power, and new modes of communication lead to new kinds of censorship. Mm, in Renaissance Spain, in King cases. Ferdinand and Queen Isabella required all printed materials to be licensed and approved in advance by government or church authorities. And in the 16th century, the English monarchy also regulated printed works to be licensed. In France, from the mid-16th century through the French Revolution, circulating defamatory pamphlets could be punishable by death. Despite these laws, the appetite wow. for news remained strong, but so did the desire to make a profit from publishing it. This brings us to the birth of the newspaper. Stevens explains that most scholars agree that newspapers must first be available to a sizable portion of the public, second, be published regularly and frequently, third, contain multiple stories in each issue, and fourth, have a consistent and recognizable title or right. format. Washington the Venetian Post, Gazette was a precursor to the modern newspaper. <laughs> During the 16th nowadays, century, right? Venice was an important center of commerce and a place in which information was exchanged between Europe and the Ottoman Empire. Since a sheet of handwritten news sold for a gazetta, a Venetian coin of little value, these papers became known as a Gazetta de la Navita, a half penny's worth of news. The <laughs> French termed this the Gazette. <laughs> the Venetian Gazette fit all the characteristics that I just listed, except for one. Its circulation was limited by an odd anachronism. These gazettes were still being written by hand. It wasn't until the 17th century Ooh, in Germany that printing the news hand? for mass consumption <laughs> began. The two oldest examples of printed European newspapers date from the same year, 1609. We might think of this as being a moment in which the public appetite for printed news really took off. The oldest surviving newspaper that was printed in the English language was a single page collection of news items cribbed from foreign journals. It was called a Caranto and it was published in Amsterdam in 1620. It was a sort of highlight reel of all the stories. The oldest surviving Caranto that was printed in England was published in 1621. It was called Carante or News from Italy, Germany, Hungary, Spain, 
Spain and France, and contain news items translated from German reports. Between 250 and 850 mm. copies of so each Quranto were printed in this series. Right? The circulation of printed materials was a powerful tool for swaying public opinions of those in power. But reporting the news was, and still is, a very dangerous business. So much so that for the remainder of the 17th century, English newspapers were heavily censored for reporting domestic news and largely stuck to commenting on foreign affairs. It wasn't until the Licensing Act expired in 1695 that it became possible for these papers to publish political arguments about debates within England. The British reading public suddenly had access to journals of opinion that were produced by people like Jonathan Swift and Daniel Defoe. According to Stevens, this began a tradition in the English press of presenting skillfully argued opinion pieces alongside business news, updates on scientific discoveries, and advertisements. Like in the, the 18th century, century as the nuts and bolts of the printing business were being worked out, more theoretical questions were being asked related to the role of the press in nation building. This is particularly the case on the other side of the Atlantic. In the US, the concept of a free press was integral to a notion of national identity. In 1765, so the British imposed the Stamp for... Act, which which required press, printers to pay right? for a stamp on each piece of paper that they used. The protests ranged from non-compliance, heated printed arguments, and the printing of alternative images to the stamp. These protests made it difficult for the British to enforce the act, and it was eventually repealed. In the creation of the media, Paul Starr argues that laws promoting the free exchange of ideas have been integral to the development of the American news industry. For example, the Constitution protected rights to free expression, and the Bill of Rights mostly denied the federal government the authority to regulate the press. Around the same time, the U.S. Postal Service, a centralized government agency, mm -hmm. had the potential to provide the government a means of censoring the news, but largely didn't. It guaranteed postal privacy and subsidized the growth of independent newspapers by providing lower postal rates for their distribution. This also coincided with the development of new technologies that made news distribution faster. In 1810, a German printer named Friedrich Koenig started working on a printing press that was connected to a steam engine. A year later, he wow. and a German engineer named Andreas Bauer Can designed a model that could make, make 1,100 <laughs> impressions an hour. In 1843, American Richard Ho created his rotary printing press, which could print millions of copies of a page in a day. And in the 1880s, German-American immigrant Ottmar Mergenthaler invented a machine that enabled a writer to type words on a keyboard that would be immediately set in molten metal. And in the 1880s, photographs began to appear in newspapers. And it says in the caption, the first halftone photograph reproduced in a newspaper, the Daily Graphic. Wow, this is the first halftone photograph. So you guys are seeing a piece of history right here. <laughs> pictures worth a thousand words. Much as ways of printing the news were evolving, so were methods of getting those inside scoops out to eager readers. After Samuel Morse's public demonstration of the telegraph in 1844, newspapers began sending correspondence into the field. Soon it became clear that good reporting was not merely observation. Reportage required trained journalists who used what came to be known as the journalistic method, which Stevens defines as the pursuit of independently verifiable facts about current events events through enterprise, observation, and investigation. By the start of the 20th century, new advancements in radio technology revolutionized the way that Americans receive news. The first American radio news program was broadcast on August 31st, 1920 by Station 8MK in Detroit. Starr claims, relative to the press in the United States, American broadcasting was more centralized, more subject to government control, less diverse, and less open to ideological contention. The federal government had actually been regulating the airwaves since 1912, when the Radio Act gave the Department of Commerce the power to license radio transmitters. As more American radio stations emerged, disputes arose over the right to control various frequencies. But the transition from printed newspapers to 24-hour news went through a few evolutions in medium along the way. As an increasing number of Americans relied on radio news, particularly during the Great Depression, radio journalists adopted a new style to hold the attention of a listening audience. They kept the detached perspective of print journalists, but simplified their sentence structures and choices of words. This style carried over into another revolutionary medium, the newsreel. This was a short documentary film that contained news stories and was presented at cinemas between the 1910s to the 1960s. Newsreels adapted the detached perspective and simplified language of radio journalists. However, the new medium had a powerful advantage. It could use moving images not only to tell a story, but also to entertain theatergoers. This early comic
combination of information and entertainment is familiar to those who watch television news today. In 1940, the first regularly scheduled television news broadcast was basically a simulcast of a radio show, Lowell Thomas's newscast for NBC. A year later, CBS offered two daily news programs on weekdays, all anchored by Richard Hubble. Over time, television news relied on images more heavily to give viewers the sense that they, too, were witnessing history as it unfolded. For decades, a few networks held the monopoly on both morning and evening news. But in 1980, Ted Turner launched the first 24-hour news operation, CNN, followed in the 1990s by competitors like Fox News, MSNBC, Al Jazeera, and this kind of new thing called home internet access and personal computers. <laughs> With the explosion of the internet, many people now have unprecedented access to live news, either on their own devices or on public computers. And with this access, many people have become less reliant on professional journalism. We have more ways to participate in a story rather than to just watch it happen. We can voice our opinion, donate to causes, reach out to someone who's been directly affected. Furthermore, we can also broadcast our own versions of personal news that are often kind of trivial, like witnessing our special lunches or beholding our glorious offspring. Or we could upload eyewitness accounts of large-scale political events. Think of videos from rallies or big gatherings. People who aren't trained journalists actually produce a larger portion of what we consider news than ever before. So what does it mean to participate in the news cycle like this? Have we become more connected and more useful members of our society? Or might our non-stop exposure to news events cause compassion fatigue or indifference to the suffering of others? Worse yet, might we turn to the news as a form of entertainment if viewing the misfortunes of others simply reminds us that we are not, in fact, suffering in quite the same way? These are naughty questions that tie very closely into our understanding of what it means to be human and what it means to be a member of an increasingly interconnected global culture. Last, the, those last few, uh, few sentences that she said were very true and it just makes you think about certain things, right? <laughs> So I hope you all enjoyed and learned something new. Oops. So again, um, any, if you have any comments on the video, I'll get right to them after we talk about our quote. So again, thinking about the video, about the history that you guys just learned about um, the news. And then after I read this quote, we'll take a minute or two to discuss. <laughs> Give me one second, you guys. Hold on, I'm going to share my screen in one second. Please get something to eat, something to drink, use the restroom if you need to. Having some technical difficulties right now, you guys. Okay, if you give me one second, I'll see what I can do. Uh, for the full screen, but I just want to get into our quote, and then I'll see if I can get <laughs> my slides to start working again. But um, again, after uh, watching that video, and then just thinking of a quote that um, had me uh, had an impact on me was from Jane Yolen. Uh, she was an author of more than four hundred books, and she's actually pictured right here. So if you ever heard of the De Devils of Arithmetic, um. Damsel in Distress, any of any of these children's books uh, <laughs> or adult books, you may have heard of this author before. She said, read something of interest every day, something of interest to you, not to your teacher, best friend, minister, whoever, right? Comics count and so does poetry or a biography of a rock star or an instruction manual or the Bible or, you know, lots of other books. So uh, every day. I think it's really important that you read every day so that way you can learn something new. Um, yes, so if anyone would like to respond to this quote or the video, 
um, please raise your hand. I'll take a few minutes to hear you guys. So first up is Anne. Uh, yes, I think, uh, I guess the teacher, uh, uh, those of us who taught uh, always have a good question. Um, uh, I think that, that we're never too learn old to learn. And I think we can learn something every day. And, and I'm blessed that my brain still operates and I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. And I thank you for bringing this to us today. Oh, n no problem, Anne. It's uh, whew, that like, you know, in the span of 300 years, folks were able to get that, that you know, the big and the fancy <laughs> printing press from it, from it being written by hand. I think mm -hmm. that's, uh, I think that's amazing. Yeah, right there. yeah that, that, that is amazing. <laughs> Especially awesome. if you didn't have good handwriting. Mm, uh, that, that's what they, that's what they, uh, that's what they did back in the day. So uh, hopefully that they were they were good. <laughs> but thank you for sharing, and I appreciate that. Um, next up is Mr. George. Yeah, that was very interesting. Um, that was my occupation was a partner. Yes, I, yes, sir. I remember you. Yeah, I remember you telling us that. Yeah, I believe I done printed everything from National Geographic to to newspapers. You know, that was very interesting to learn the ways that they originally started. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's 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 uh, we all come from somewhere, right? <laughs> yep. So uh, thank thank you for sharing, Mr. George. I appreciate it. All right. Yeah, but it's, it's almost a lost industry because you don't see very much many, much printing now. Everything's gone paperless. In, in in a way, and you know that's that's due to a lot of uh, you know our environment and our world and such. But I, you know, a lot of people, most people, I, I know, I get the newspaper get delivered, you know. Yeah. To my building so uh it's it's still there but certainly a lot more of it is virtual now more more than ever right yeah <laughs> well again thank you for sharing mr george i appreciate it okay mm -hmm. yeah and don't forget to lower your hands you guys um next up is miss thompson Ms. brenda go ahead and unmute Um, yes, I, I agree with you, Anne. Um, we never get too old to learn new tricks. That's what they say, used to say about dogs, but they really were talking about humans also. Um, this, mm. this iPad that I received has been a blessing to me because I'm learning every day and I thank you for the news. Um, when I saw this was coming on, on Friday night, I heard a lot of shooting in the neighborhood. And I saw on the news on TV this morning, it was at Giant at Old Street Market. And I looked it up on the news to see if I could find it, but I couldn't. And I still have some mm -hmm. more um, digging in to look for the news and all the things that it has to offer us. And I thank you, Alex, for this information today, because all the things that you do are very interesting. Oh, and I, I think I, I thank you for that. And everything that everybody it says and the feedback we get is, is um, interesting. And I stay on at, as long as I can because um, I don't want to miss nothing. I'm on a roll. Yes, yes, ma'am. I, I know that's right. <laughs> and and uh, yes, that, you know, it's really important to know, you know, what's going on around you. So uh, hopefully these things help you out today. But thank you so much for sharing, Ms. Brenda. Thank Appreciate you. It. <laughs> All right, we got Ms. Geraldine and then uh, Ms. Brenda, and then we'll go on to our apps.
mute. Hi, uh, Alex. Yeah, that that was an interesting film to um mm -hmm. to learn about the, the the origin of the news and the invention mm -hmm. of paper. You, you don't think about it, but you have to have the paper to print the news on. Mm -hmm. And the, yeah, and talked about the invention of that and the printing press. We always learned over here about Gutenberg, but I don't know if we mm -hmm. we learned anything about the Chinese. I don't remember learning anything about them and yeah. their printing, uh, but I learned about Gutenberg over in Germany. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was a very interesting, very interesting film. And then she says something about, she said, you know, sometimes new, new news is entertainment. And, you know, that's mm -hmm. true because sometimes you'll have, the, you'll have CNN or MSNBC on in the background, you know, you're doing other things, but that's in the background. So I look mm -hmm. at that as sort of entertainment because it's entertaining you while you're doing other things in your house. Yeah. Oh, you you already know. Just like it's a TV show or audio, any anything that has you know the music and and the, and the you know the funny people on there and, uh -huh. and you know when you like you say you might be in the background, but uh, if you hear something that piques your attention, you're gonna go to that TV and watch it, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> watch it. Yeah. So that was very good. I thank you for bringing that to us, bringing that information to us. Oh, no problem, Gerald. Thank you for getting on today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the session. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Brenda, and then we'll move on. But thank you all for sharing today and for lowering your hands. Appreciate it. Hey, hey, Alex. Um, hey, Brenda. I'd like, to, I'd like to respond to this read something of interest every day. I like to look on my desktop and read quotes. I love looking mm -hmm. at inspirational quotes because they have so much meaning to them, you know? And, and yes, then I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a news buff. I, I love the <laughs> news. I, I look at the news every morning. I look at Channel 9. Even on the weekends, I look at the news. So, but then, yes, you, you, yes. Know, you know, with all of the the bad stuff going on and the war, and you know, you yeah. just kind of get, kind of get worried. Of, you know, it just worries you down. So, but I, I I really enjoy looking at the news and listening to the news. And like I said, mm -hmm. I do my inspirational quotes. Can I give you one then? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I, 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 before you do that, I just want to, uh, yes, comment on that because sometimes the news, yes, it, it can, um, you know, get negative. Well, and yeah. well, because you know, because you know, we, we for certain things, you need to know what what happened. I'd rather it be out there so someone can know. You know, it could, you know, some information could you yeah. know, save someone's life, right? You know, yeah. just knowing what what's going on. So even the news for myself, you know, I get I, my phone, my tablet, you know, I, I hear about it all the time from yeah. people. So it's just about um, keep going and, and not letting get, you know, the, particularly the negative stuff, you know, right. get to you. Because, you know, you got your life to live. It right? can and, get to you, yeah. And I, yeah, I try, you know, be aware of what's going on in my neighborhood, you know, so I, so I'll know. But, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, it can get it kind of wear you down a little bit. But but one of my favorites is, I think it's yours too. It's by Maya Angelou. It says, when you know better, you do better. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. When, yeah. It, that, that's what you got. You got to do that every day. You got to. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. You, you got a new, new quote every day is just like looking at the news. You, you never know what you're going to get, right? That's right. That's right. Thanks, Alex. This is this is great. This is good. Um, no problem, Brenda. Thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes, I, I do see Mr. Thomas, but I want to make sure we get through the session today because we got to end a little earlier than usual. So please, I appreciate it if you could save your comment to your question in the end, Mr. Thomas. Appreciate that. <laughs> um, so yes, next up, we're going to go into our tutorials today. So again, Apple News. So the app from Apple itself and Google Knows, which you got to download on the app store. We're going to go um, over each of these and hopefully help you guys out with uh, navigating them as well. Yep.
So the first one is Apple News. Again, it's news and magazines. And this is what the app looks like, okay? And it it kind of looks like an N, but it's a white and red icon. It should be on the very first home screen of your iPad. Um, this app introduces you to world, the world's best journalism, trusted sources, curated by editors, and personalized by you. Those are some features as well. Um, an Apple News Plus subscription, basically $10 a month, allows you to access magazines and premium newspapers. So there's a free portion, and then there's a News Plus version, which is exclusive magazines and newspapers. But it's not, it's a, I would say it's like 60-40, I guess, with the free versus the paid. Um, some features include top stories and local news, in-depth sports coverage, and articles from your favorite publishers like the Washington Post, NBC News, USA Today, etc. And this is what the app will look like around um, on your device. So you see it's very colorful, lots of images, and the uh, um, it's really easy to read once you get into it. Uh, this is what your home screen will look like. And the main button that we're going to use to navigate within the Apple News app is the navigation button right here at the top left. Again, it looks like the um, icon in mail where you have to access this navigation bar. So again, you tap there to open or close it. So that way you can navigate through the app. So again, if I'm on my home screen of my iPad, you should see the news app right here. I, um, it's again, it's white, red, it's on the second row, the fifth icon um, on this on the second row. So this is the news app. If you need to go in your library and search for the news app, you can, but this is the Apple News app. And again, this is what um, it will look like. So again, I know there's maybe a lot going on right now in the world, so let's just keep that in mind. And let's, uh, anytime you see something that may be a little sad, just, uh, you know, keep praying and hoping for the best. But again, this is what your uh, Apple News will look like. So you see there's lots lots of headlines. You see I can just scroll up and down and look through all the different articles that are available. So um, you notice some of them are Apple News Plus. They have that little logo right there and some of them are not. <laughs> this article says, why is so much going wrong at the same time? <laughs> I don't know. I guess we're just uh, going through it, right? But uh, as you can see, there's lots of different things that you can read. And you may find something that you'd be interested in. Okay. So again, um, at the top is going to be that search button. So you can search um, for articles by topic or author or by publication. Um, there's the today button where you can do top stories, articles for you, sports lots of different um, types of articles. There's the News Plus button, of course. So if you don't have a subscription, um, you uh, aren't able to access that. So if you don't have it, I wouldn't worry about that. And then there are other options like Shared With You, Save Stories, and the History button. So you could see which ones were shared with you, uh, which articles were saved by you, and which ones you've read already in your history. So if I go back again to my Apple News app here at the, at the search bar right here is at the top. Again, I can search for anything. So again, I like cooking. So let me type in cooking to the search bar. And look, some popular stories, how to carve a pumpkin easily, <laughs> how to clean and roast pumpkin seeds on uh, from your jack-o'-lantern. Why it pays to trim the fat for me before it goes into your slow cooker. That one's, I, I really want to read that one. <laughs> that one's pretty good. Um, so that's the search button. You can search for anything. So if I want to type in sports and and uh, <laughs> let me put in commanders. I didn't see how the game ended yesterday. <laughs> sports, commanders. You could just even put sports. Oh, gosh. Look at this article from the Washington Post. It says commanders just keep crumbling under pressure. <laughs> so it's so easy to search for an article and and read it you see that it's pretty big you can even change the text size when you're in an article and make it even and make it bigger if you need to so um you can use the search button for anything anything you want to search for you can type it in 
the search bar and you'll be able to see what's going on. Um, the News Plus button, of course, if you have um, Apple News, um, then you, look, here's some of the benefits. You get the Wall Street Journal people, the Atlantic, um, other benefits, and it, but it does start around $10 a month. So like $10.29 or something with tax. Um, sports, again, if you wanna know more about sports, there's a whole sports section right here, uh, talking about the Dolphins. Uh, you see scores and schedules. So for the NA NHL, there's a game on, uh, there was a game yesterday, and there's a game on Tuesday. <laughs> a lot about sports. You can follow your teams. If I hit follow your teams, open my sports. One sports experience, pick your teams. <laughs> so I can pick anything from here regarding NFL, MLB, so I can look at news regarding those teams. So for, let's do NBA. I like, let's see. I like Golden State. <laughs> so let me add the plus. And I think I'll just do that for now. Go back and then hit done. So that way, anything regarding Golden State Warriors, you see the sports is right here. So anything regarding them, again, you can see their score and their schedule, any stories. That's pretty cool, right? <laughs> so that's the sports section. Yep, again, there is a puzzle section, but you do need that Apple News subscription. But hey, you can get some uh, crosswords in here, which is pretty cool. Uh, yep, shared with you any articles that were shared. And no one, no one has shared a story with me yet, so I don't have any shared stories. <laughs> Save stories. You see, I have uh, some saved stories from uh, years ago. <laughs> um, that I save for later. I'll show you guys how to do that in, in a few. Um, again, my history, all the articles I've read, um, I can see the ones that I've read in my history. Uh, this one was pretty sad when the, they said Suzanne Summers passed away. That was, that was pretty sad. <laughs> uh, I know about these companies so, and, and heard of her. So um, I read that a, a week ago. Um, but that's the first part right here in the Apple News section. It's pretty easy. Just read what each tab is and you can go into it and explore it. Okay. So that is the first section of the Apple News app. Um, your favorites, you can view all of your favorite publications in one place through whole issues or articles. So if I go back to my Apple News app and go to my favorites, you see again this navigation button. I can either hit the button at the top left to close it or open it. You see that you guys, that's how you can navigate and make it bigger and smaller. Um, your favorites. Um, these are uh, my favorite publications that I added to my favorites. <laughs> but you see some of them require a subscription. So I had people. That one requires Apple News Plus. So these are all your favorite publications. OK. Again, local news, you can experience your local news featuring publishers showcasing politics, sports, dining, culture, and more. So again, if I go to my Apple News app, and then again, I'm just going scrolling through here. Uh, I hit local news, right? And because we're in DC, <laughs> so we're, I'm gonna hit DC. So look, today, um, it's gonna be 65 today, right now it's 52, it's sunny. Uh, again, news and politics about DC, sports, business and real estate, arts and events. And there's all these different sections here. Um, if you ever see any three dots on the top right hand side, you're able to, again, share maybe the topic, copy this link, um, et cetera. And if you get sections, you can, you can quickly browse to a section. So like food and drink. Uh, eight allergy friendly snacks for vegan, gluten free, and nut free diets. <laughs> Every monster cookies, apple ring treats, chewy vegan brownies. So, look, you can get a lot of inspiration. <laughs> Cowboy caviar, love bean salad. I think they're very underrated. <laughs> um, but anything local news, you'll be able to add it right here. 
Um, the next section after local news is channels and topics. You can view different publications through whole issues or spotlighted articles, and you can browse through them through here. Um, so again, if I go to my Apple's News app and on the left-hand side, I hit channels and topics, you see these are all of the different channels and topics I've added. You can add more by hitting discover channels at the bottom. But look, USA Today, lots of stuff, news, sports, life, tech. You see the top, at the top, you can do all of those different options. Entertainment. <laughs> and this is all free, which is pretty cool. Anything about music or uh, Apple, like, you know, the company. Uh, you can add them right from here by discovering all the different channels available. Okay. Um, it, by the way, if I'm in here on the left-hand side and I hit edit, I can add them or, or um, get rid of them from this section, or I can even star them for later. So you see my favorites are here and my channels are here. So if I add um, um, L, as my favorite, it appears here at the top now as well. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> um, so here at the, um, again, on the left-hand side, any of your channels and topics that you've added, you can access them here. So Apple, um, top 10 best laptops, iPhone 15, anything new about Apple, you can learn straight from the Apple News app. Sorry about that, you guys. I don't know why my presentation keeps closing on me. <laughs> but um, if I go back, on the left-hand side, again, we're just going through this bar, just showing you guys. They're suggested by Siri. Some, um, well, some different channels that are uh, suggested. So like, I'll add iPhone and education, maybe celebrities and weather. <laughs> I added those and now you, you should see them here in my channels and topics. So you can add them here if you like those certain topics. And manage at the bottom, you can manage any notification. So anytime an article comes out from Vogue or Time or GQ or Cosmopolitan or any of the others that I get, I'll get a notification to my uh, notifications right here. So you see there's not one from National Geographic one hour ago. I can tap on it and view that article from my notification and email, okay? <laughs> so that is the left-hand side. So if you touch any of these or minimize them, you can uh, go to different channels and different publishers straight from that app. Um, again, it's taken a minute for my session to load. So I'm just gonna go into an article. So when you actually tap on an article, let's go to this one from CNET. One month later, the iPhone 15 is still an excellent upgrade. <laughs> oh, haven't made that decision yet, but I, I'm probably going to um, upgrade. <laughs> and it looks nice. But look, I'm in the article. Just like we talked about during module five, you can copy and paste any of the information in here. So if I just hold and navigate the little buttons on each side, I can copy and paste and share this information from this article. So if I was doing research and I needed a section to cite, that's the way I would do it on my iPad. You see at the top right here, there are some buttons. So the first one is the bookmark button besides the back one. You can bookmark it or save it for later. See, it's a save story now. Excuse me. So if I hit save stories on the left, I should be able to view it. Hmm. I think it closed as soon as I hit save, you guys. <laughs> let me go back to Apple and let me see again if I can find that article. Hmm. Here you go, one month later, and let me save it. So I just bookmarked it here at the top. I can share this article by hitting the share button. So look, I can share it through iMessage, through, through mail. So if you ever wanna send an article to somebody, you can uh, iMessage them or mail them or whatever other option there is. Um, I can thumbs it up on the right-hand side at the top, or I can thumbs it down. 
Again, I can adjust the text size, I can make it bigger. So you see the text size, I just increased it, right? So if you, if you need it bigger, you can adjust the text size with those A's. So let me go back to the regular font. And then if I hit these three dots here, there's a lot more options for like turn on notifications, um, suggest less, copy link, share story. I can adjust any of these different settings from this article right here, okay? So that's how you get into an article. If you hit the back button, you can go back, do more, use the navigation bar on the side to just uh, explore and see what is out there. Okay. Um, the next app we're going to go over is the Google News app. Again, I am trying to see if I can get my presentation back up. Not sure why it's uh, going out today, <laughs> but I appreciate you guys' patience. Huh. While it loads, because um, let me, I want to make sure that I go through everything in here. But again, when you open the Apple News app on the left hand side, this is the navigation button where you can navigate to any different part of the app. So it's really easy to access and, and edit. Okay, so you can always get to your news if you need to. Sorry about that, you guys. Still waiting for this thing. But um, if you want to download Google News, which we're going to talk about in a second, again, you're going to go to the App Store because this isn't, you know, preloaded from Apple. This is Google's app, right? So when you go to the App Store, you go to search. And at the top, you're going to type in Google News. So you guys can follow along as well. And it will appear here on the top right, Google News. It's very, very popular, almost 250,000 ratings. You're going to hit get and download the app. And it's just um, another, you know, another type of news site and information. It's always good if you want to um, compare two different articles and see how they um, are similar and different. It's a good way to check to see if something is accurate or not. <laughs> but uh, you'll get it, download it onto your iPad and uh, you'll be able to access it. So again, I'm trying to get this session up. Appreciate your patience, everyone. Yeah, so we did go over everything and from the Apple News portion, and now we just got to get to this portion. Okay. Let me try one more time to get this up. If not, we're gonna to have to improvise, okay? <laughs> yeah, so we have to improvise today, which is okay. <laughs> so um, Google News, again, is a personalized news collector that organizes and showcases what's happening in the world. So you can discover more about the stories that matter to you. With Google News, you'll find local news articles for you, um, worldwide headlines, and even a categorized newsstand as well. So it's basically like if you have a physical newsstand, but on your iPad through this app. Um, this is what your home screen will look like when you um, get into the Google News app. And again, it's very simple. There's this navigation bar here at the bottom where you can navigate between um, the different articles and options available. And uh, the main two on this first screen are the search button. So if you see here at the top left, that's magnifying glass, that's how you search for articles. And it even tells you the weather um, of your location right here. So when this screenshot was taken on April 24th <laughs> of this year, it was 56 degrees outside, so. Mm. And last but not least, again, this for you section, this home screen, it uh, takes you to top stories, local news, stories for you, and interesting reads. So this is what your uh, screen may look like when you turn on your location or first open the app up. You'll need to sign in to Google, so you'll need a Google account to take advantage of Google News, okay? Um, so if I go to the app, again, Google News, 
we went over it a few months ago. You open the app. And look, it says your briefing. So uh, Monday, October 23rd. And right now it's uh, 54 degrees. <laughs> Can you believe it, right? Same temperature on this ex exact same day that we do the session again. That's pretty funny. So right now it's 54 degrees, it'll be 64 today, it'll be 70 tomorrow, 70, oh my goodness, 82 degrees, what is going on in DC? <laughs> so that's the weather button right here. Um, again, for you, top stories, local news, picks for you, sources, so you can see all the different sources like New, New York Times, Bloomberg, Reuters, you can even add more. All different types of news right here. So you see I'm scrolling, you, see, you guys see how much there is? <laughs> Just scroll, scroll, and scroll, and you see all these different articles. So that is the uh, For You section in Google News, once you have everything set up. Um, the headlines, you can view the hottest articles through different filters. And um, there's an option even called Full Coverage. When you see Full Coverage right here, you'll see, you'll dive deeper into a story with multiple perspectives. It highlights coverage from different outlets and mediums. So just like we were talking about, it's good to view the same story from different publishers and, and, and uh, authors because they may have a different perspective, right? So it's really important to check that out. So when you're in Google News, you hit headlines here at the bottom and you see there's a lot of different options so let's see if there's one this may be a little more fun <laughs> a lot of going on in the world you guys so um let's see do, 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 do. you see all these different headlines these are a lot of the popular popular topics right now so there's a lot going on oh <laughs> it says Bobby, the world's oldest dog ever dies at age 31. Oh my goodness, the 31 year old dog, you guys. <laughs> so if I hit full coverage of the story, look, BBC News covered it, Fox News covered it, the Guinness World Records covered it, people covered it. Oh, <laughs> the dog was so cute. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but you see when it takes you to an article, it takes you to their page and you can read the article. Guinness World Record holder Bobby, a purebred were fair dolento, passed away at his home in Portugal on Saturday. <laughs> wow. That is so sad. But look, all these different publishers are talking about it. So this was a beloved pooch, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, those are the headlines. Anything you want to hit? Uh, look, face the nation. I know you like that, Brenda. <laughs> so uh, all these different options here. Um, the next one is following. So any any uh, topics or sources or locations um, that you want to add to see more stories related to them, you can edit them in the following section. You can even view saved stories and articles or in searches. So you see, I have this topic. If I want to add more topics, locations and sources and add them, um, let's say like cooking uh cooking topic so let me put that when i hit cooking topic look lots of different stuff about cooking and then i'm going to favorite it here at the top right with this star so that way i follow it right um sources of you all and manage let me hit the plus button and add a new one so i like um let's see national Geographic, let me add that source. <laughs> so look, I can look at all the articles or publications from National Geographic and again, favorite them. So that way, again, it appears in my sources now. And then local, uh, we're in DC, so you can add local news. Maybe uh, if I was back at school, um, let me type in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I can look at what's going on and in Harrisburg, you know, that's the capital right there. And I'll favorite that. So I can have a local news in Washington, which is my primary location, but also look at the stuff in Harrisburg as well. 
Any saved searches and saved stories will appear here at the bottom. So that's the third button in following. Last but not least is the new stand section. You can view groups of publications by category. So entertainment, all the publications for entertainment, food and drink, same thing, right? <laughs> so again, we're just going to go back to the Google News app, hit newsstand, and look, you can, uh, stories selected by newsroom editors. So Barron's, The Guardian, The New York Times, more entertainment, food and drink, health and fitness. So I like Bon Appetit. I like E News. <laughs> I like, I do like Cosmopolitan. Uh, Food Network. Hmm. I do like HGTV. <laughs> I'm a um, tiny house hunter's sucker. <laughs> That's my show. Um, Wall Street Journal. You see, it, all I'm doing is tapping on them to favorite them for later. Uh, maybe for special interest. I like TED Talks. Let me do that. So any of those that I just showcased right here, Yep, I just added them to my newsstand. So any of these sources right here. Pretty cool. More entertainment. You can view a lot of different publications just for free using this Google News app. Um, let me see. Next up. Um, this is what uh, the article will look like when you're inside of an article. Um, there's a share button here at the top right. And you can share the article if you want. The more button, you can save it for later. At the bottom right here is the refresh button. You can refresh the article if you want. And here at the bottom right, look, there's even a full coverage option. You can uh, look at all the different articles, again, just like uh, before with the full coverage, okay? So if I'm in Google News and I go to Entertainment Weekly, <laughs> and let's see. Yellowstone, the 10 best Yellowstone episodes. <laughs> so when I open the uh, when I open the article, again, you see it's very simple to navigate. You just swipe and and read the article um, at the top right. I can share it if I want by hitting that share button. And you see on the left hand side, I can mail it or copy it. I can even open it in Safari if I want to. Um, if I hit these three dots, again, I can save the article for later, which will appear in the following section. And at the bottom left, if I needed to, I can refresh this news article as well. Okay. Um, this one doesn't have full coverage, but if it did, you'll see it at the bottom right. So you can see all the different um, news folks that are uh, releasing those, okay? <laughs> But uh, that brings us to our overview and our discussion. So we're going to talk about how these apps can improve our daily lives, but I hope you enjoy that tutorial and I'll be helping you guys out with uh, downloading the app and, and answering, and hopefully you guys can answer some of these questions that I have, okay?